Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> floor entertainment group you're about to this rapidly growing colorado based team has come onto the scene in a big way and is now recognized as the world's largest halloween themed entertainment company with more than 15 iconic haunts and premier markets across the u.s they also produce and own live touring events and year-round attractions taking the industry by storm their latest acquisition brings them into the Southern California market with the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride, which is brand new for 2019 under the creative direction of the one and only John Cook. We're thrilled to welcome 13th floor to Southern California. So let's give it up for your host and moderator for this panel, writer and director of Play Productions, Ted Doherty. Hello. Hi. Hi, everybody. Wow. Crazy. Hi. Welcome. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today. This is so cool. Hey, you know what? Before we begin, by show of hands, who here has been to the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride? Nice. Another question. Who here is going to the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride 2019? <laughs> nice. Uh, my name is Ted Doherty, writer and director at Plague Productions. Uh, you might be familiar with some of the companies Plague Productions has worked with. Any fans of Not Scary Farm? Yeah. Did anybody go last year to Queen Mary's Dark Harbor? Yeah. Nice. Well, you're about to find out what happens when we help reimagine an event in its entirety. We are so happy to finally be able to share some details on what aims to be Plague Productions most prominent scope of work, the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride. So, uh, before we kind of dive into things, there's some story, there's some backstory we want to share with you, kind of help explain what we've been working on and who we have been working with. There's lots of moving puzzle pieces here because the LA Haunted Hayride does have new owners we want to introduce to you. So we're going to lay down some of that groundwork and then we'll get into some details on what people can expect to see at the event this year. Sound okay? Yeah. You guys ready? Okay, listen. Just one quiet little side note, just between us friends here. I've been involved with this industry for many, many years. Maybe longer than some of you have even been alive. It's, it's terrible to, to think about. Yeah. But please believe me when I tell you that the new owners for the LA Haunted Hayride, the company that Plague Productions has teamed up with, these guys are no joke. Who are they? Well, they only happen to be the largest Halloween themed entertainment company in the world. 15 major Halloween events spread throughout our country and the LA Haunted Hayride is their first event in California. Based out of Denver, Colorado, 13th Floor Entertainment Group. They've produced some of the most mind-blowing and detailed haunted attractions anywhere, and they have hired Plague Productions to not only help produce, but to creatively reimagine the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride. So, let's take a moment and take a look at some of the things 13th Floor Entertainment Group has produced, and we'll get to know these guys a little bit better. So, let's go ahead and roll that first video.
Well, that's just a small taste. Let's get to know these guys a little bit more. 13th Floor Entertainment Group co-founders, CEO Chris Stafford and Director of Operations Warren Connard. Please give them a warm Southern California welcome. How's everyone doing? So I'm gonna jump right in and say I am completely blown away by the atmosphere at this show and the amount of enthusiasts that are here. It's like nothing I've ever seen. It's pretty amazing, guys. So I love it. Welcome to Midsummer Screen, guys. Cool. Well, I would like to allow my friends out here to get to know you guys a little bit and vice versa, really. So can each of you guys talk a little bit about how long you've been in the industry and how you've really kind of grown up in it? Yeah, actually, um, as our company's grown, probably one of the biggest misconceptions about us is that we were business guys that got into haunted houses, and that's actually completely the opposite. Warren and I actually met working at a haunted house when we were 15 years old in Denver, so um, in one way or another, we've been involved in this business ever since we were teenagers, and that's, you know, that's how we originally met. I love it. Warren? Yeah, when, uh, when Chris and I were young, when we started working at the haunted house, we didn't even know each other. We crossed paths. Um, we came into that haunted house through different channels. And growing up through the 90s, uh, when there were 20 haunted houses in Denver, not only did we work in the haunted houses, um, we went to every haunted house in Denver every year. And we're enthusiasts, and we go to Monster Palooza every year. Um, we, we just enjoy it. And back in the early 2000s, we thought, you know, we want to do this, but on a bigger scale. We want to do something, you know, we want rooms to look like this, and we want uh, these effects to do that. So we, uh, in 2002, we just decided to break away and, and start our own haunted house company, and we did that, and it's grown every year, and we enjoy it every day. We're fortunate to have jobs, and jobs that we love. Love it. That was going to be kind of my question on what the genesis of 13th Floor Entertainment Group was. Now, how would you guys define the 13th Floor Entertainment Group mission statement in terms of haunted, haunted attraction production and presentation? You know, I, I'm going to keep it real simple. We want to build cool shit that people want to see. I love it. Now, several of your haunts are standalone attractions. Well, you have other events like the LA Haunted Hayride, which I would define more as a screen park, multiple attractions at one location, but not a theme park per se. So let's learn a little bit more about the LA Haunted Hayride and its connections to 13 Floor Entertainment Group and play production. So let's bring out LA Haunted Hayride founder and producer, Melissa Carbone, and creative director and owner of Plague Productions, Mr. John Cook. Hi. Hello. Are they here for the free tickets later? Or <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not here for us. Uh, hey, well, Ted. Hi, guys. Uh, hey. You know, the LA Haunted Hayride celebrated its 10th anniversary this past season. Melissa, can you talk a little bit about how the LA Haunted Hayride began and how it's really kind of grown throughout the years? Yeah, absolutely. I know 10 years is kind of unbelievable. I, I, even saying it, it sounds it sounds crazy to me. Um, but yeah, you know, the LA Haunted Hayride started in a super organic way, and people have probably heard me say this a few times, but I was, I was a home haunter. Right in this little like soccer mom USA neighborhood in, in Westwood, California. Didn't know that what a home haunter was though. By the way, I, I just was one. Somebody told me one day. Oh, I think you're a home haunter. And I was like, what is that? Sounds kind of nerdy, but okay, maybe I'm a home haunter. So it was. I was just creating these these big displays in my yard year after year, and they were just getting bigger and bigger until one day. Um, I was I had a bunch of friends. We were having a Halloween party at the same time, and I looked in my front yard, and there were like 200 people like canoodling in my front yard with like drinks and like all the soccer moms had come out. And um, I was like, "What is this weird Halloween thing? Like, this is so weird. People are into it." And I started doing the research behind it. And at the time, it was a six and a half billion dollar industry. And I, you know, the light bulb kind of went off that this was a, a big town 
you know, that was, I thought, underserved at the time for Halloween things to do, because this was in 2008, and I think there were really only like four things to do. It was like Universal Knots, Queen Mary, maybe that was it, um, Six Flags. But so, you know, being from New England, my favorite, favorite thing to do around the Halloween, the Halloween holiday was go on haunted hayrides, which were a huge thing in New England. And it was, they would just pack people, like lines. You'd wait in line for two hours. It was the greatest thing ever. And I always wanted something like that and felt like it, it was missing and that that could be the thing. Why not in this concrete jungle of LA take a bunch of Los Angelinos, stick them in the woods at night, and <laughs> annihilate them? Right? Yeah, so and there we have the hair. I love it. That's yeah. so cool. And real quick, I think what's, what's interesting, um, all of us coming from different... Uh, avenues towards this event that's what we all found the value in is like you're stepping out into the woods in the middle of la and it feels like you're in a small east coast town so that's really where we're all kind of steering this thing towards more and more is is really to lean into that atmosphere totally and as the la haunted hayride <laughs> continues to kind of grow and evolve it connects with companies like 13th floor entertainment group and play production so john can you talk a little bit about how we got involved? How do Plague Productions connect with 13th Floor Entertainment Group and this project? Actually, I'm gonna let Chris kick this one off because it's kind of been a, we've, we've both been on each other's radars for so long and it's kind of all just kind of come together this year. Yeah, I'd, I'd always heard about this uh, mysterious John Cook, this <laughs> rock star haunted house guy. It was, it was just kind of like, eh, I don't know about this guy. But, a little, uh, little shady. <laughs> when, we, when we finally met and we got to sit down and talk, um, it was interesting, you know, I had, I had been to several attractions that he had been involved in and was talking about things and I'm like, oh, I really like that. And he's like, yeah, I did that. And I was like, oh, I really, li I really like this other thing. He's like, yeah, that was mine too. <laughs> you know, of course I'm like, ah, he's, maybe he's full of crap, but let me, let me figure this out. But, uh, you know, after getting to know people that he knows and, and talk to a lot of people that he's worked with, um, you know, his background was, was impeccable and amazing and creative and, and we just kind of became friendly and started talking about things and then Melissa and I were talking about, you know, different directions for the Hayride when we got involved together and like, what can we do and what's next and, and uh, it was really kind of just a natural progression that uh, we were able to get John involved. And uh, I don't think I've ever shared this, but two years ago when we were going to Transworld, I remember me and my, my team, we were headed out there and I just, I was working on my computer and I just created a file, just called 13th Floor. I was like, I don't know what's gonna go in it, but one day there's gonna be something in there. And we went, uh, and we've always looked up to 13th Floor as this huge company, uh, we've done a lot of traveling through the band, we were able to see a lot of the property, and I was always totally blown away that they're producing these, like, in my opinion, Disney quality attractions out in the Midwest in these warehouses. And that's something that, that my team, we strive to, to be able to produce those things as well, so. Just kind of this really cool coming together to this year. Yeah, I mean, I'll even take it back a little bit further. And you and I had the same discussion the first time. Melissa and I were introduced through a mutual friend, and uh, I was out in LA, and we sat down and started talking about what it would look like if, if we brought things together. And and it was kind of like you said earlier, we had both been on each other's radars, but forever, forever but didn't really yeah. didn't make the connection. So it's it's pretty <laughs> cool to see how it all connected up. Well, that kind of brings everybody up to date as to how and why we're all up here. So now let's get into some of those juicy details on uh, what people can expect to see at the event uh, this year. Um, you know, we were all very interested in creating a new story uh, driven by character aspects involving interactivity, immersion, and a compelling story that will engage our guests. So how do we do that? We create a town, the town of Midnight Falls. So let's bring up that next video. Listening to MFAM Radio Midnight Falls. We are extremely excited you'll be joining us for the annual Halloween Festival. New for 1985, we'll have live entertainment, a hayride, and maybe a few friends. Because it's always Halloween here in Midnight. 
represents small town USA, kind of picture upper east coast, breezy fall weather, chilly autumn nights, the leaves are changing color, a traditional harvest time, but Midnight Falls is celebrating its 13th annual Halloween festival and you are all invited. But, you, yeah. but you'll find that things are a little bit off. Because in Midnight Falls, it's always Halloween night. It's always celebrating its 13th annual Halloween festival. And it's always 1985. So just as with any kind of small town, things kind of revolve around the, the town square, right? Um, and, and Midnight Falls is no different. This is where the heart of the Halloween festival is taking place. But things are offsetting. Things are weird, frightening, as if everything's caught in a bizarre and horrific episode of The Twilight Zone. And that all spreads out to the surrounding four main attractions that we'll get into, because everything at the event ties back to the terrifying secrets and story of Midnight Falls, especially its residents. So John, or all of us, let's talk a little bit about what people can expect when they arrive to the event and what they might expect to experience inside the town square. So the, the, the town square is the, the epicenter. This is where the celebration is happening. So like Ted was saying, the four surrounding attractions all feed back into this town. But at any time you can go out into the town square and celebrate and have fun with our characters. I don't know if anybody's had the chance to interact with our characters. Uh, if anybody's here, they maybe might have had a, uh, a dance party with a werewolf and a mullet. Anybody? No? A couple of you? No? So they're, they're, the characters they're, are the different creatures of the town. They represent the different attractions or different um, uh, establishments that you can find throughout the town. And they're there to, to immerse you deeper into the story. So one of the things we want to do is you to be able to go out, interact with them, and get clues to that tie deeper and deeper into this mystery, mysterious town. Exactly. And, and those roaming characters throughout the town square really kind of represent like the pantheon of gods for small town USA. We've got like the politician, the gossipy PTA soccer mom, the blue collar workers, uh, you know, the entitled football star and the cheerleader and the beauty queen, but these characters will be scary. But for those looking for a deeper experience, can engage these characters and learn about Midnight Falls and maybe about the residents and the town itself and maybe some of its secrets. So those are some of the things that people can experience inside the town square. As we mentioned earlier, there'll be four main attractions three walkthroughs and then the hayride itself. The first walkthrough attraction we're gonna talk about really kind of represents that dark and spooky house at the end of the street, standing there ominous. We know the kind, right? You know, strange noises are heard coming from inside late at night. The Midnight Falls neighbors are always complaining, wondering what in the heck is going on inside that house. And it's secrets in the Midnight Mortuary. Let's talk about the Midnight Mortuary. Well, the idea behind it is it's owned and operated, been owned and operated for 75 years by the Marlowe family. And they're kind of weird, but the, the, the residents kind of tolerate them. What the residents don't know are the deep and dark, terrifying secrets deep inside this house. Maybe responsible for some of the things going on in Midnight Falls. Definitely responsible for some of the bodies turning up in their mortuary, right? Yes. <laughs> but um, what we wanted to do with these four attractions is, that since there's only four, we wanted to make sure they are all vastly in different feel. So this is our standard haunted house attraction where you're walking through. We uh, the whole thing scenic out. We actually brought in a company you might have heard of, uh, Sinister Point, to kind of help us with some of this, some of the production into this maze. So they're going to be coming out. We're going to be building um, an entire maze, ground up, subfloored, and everything. And this is our, our 
more traditional haunted attraction. Yeah, exactly. The, the, the genesis really was, we were just trying to say, all right, let's try to make the, like a haunted house, just a traditional haunted house. But then the deeper we got into the story of Midnight Falls, we're like, okay, let's try to make this fit in. And then nothing's really more macabre than a really evil type of mortuary, right? Late at night. So. Yeah, if any, if any of you have been by the, the booth at the entryway of the show, it's funny, if you're listening on the, to the radio announcements out there, the one that cracks me up is about Midnight Mortuary and going shopping there, which I thought was pretty <laughs> Yeah, because so for within the story at the event, Midnight Mortuary is offering open house tours. So that way people can come and check out what they've got going on. And that's part of the fun in the Halloween festival. So um, our next walkthrough uh, was really inspired by an attraction featured at the LA Haunted Hayride for uh, several seasons, uh, but now it has the Midnight Falls kind of twist to it. And the, the visitors attending this attraction uh, will discover that the Midnight Falls residents have a disturbing way of taking in the spirit of Halloween in trick or treat. Melissa, can you talk a little bit about how Trick or Treat really kind of began? Because it really did capture such a fun spirit, the Halloween type of spirit. It did. Um, that was that suburban soccer mom neighborhood I had talked about when I talked about how we, we started the Hayride. It, it was this, for me, I, I loved the way it felt, right? Like I loved being in this neighborhood and I loved the trick or treaters and I loved, um, I just loved the vibe that was happening in town. So, I mean, probably five years after the Hayride started, maybe six years, um, we had been doing, we'd been playing with some other themes there. There was something called um, the Seven Sins Sideshow one year um, and the House of the Horsemen. There were some, some different things that we were playing with. And, um, and we were sitting at a round table creative team meeting. And I think, and I think at one point we, we were out of ideas and we couldn't think of something that was just, that just grabbed us. And I thought to myself, I think we're just overthinking this. Like, trick or treat. Like, let's just people, let's let people trick or treat every day, all October long. And um, so it started there, and then I just, I became like this freight train around, you know, how to create this, this town um, around trick or treating and how we could thematically, you know, make, make each house different. We could make each inhabitant of the house different. We could create like a, um, an ambiance in the town with lots of pumpkins and really make it feel like something that gave you the essence of, of Halloween outside of an attraction standpoint, but in, in the, the, the trick-or-treating kind of vein, right? So a Halloween attraction that where you actually could trick-or-treat to me sounded like something that would be fun and would make a lot of sense. And it, I mean, it's been a fan favorite ever since we did it. I don't, I don't think we could get rid of it now if we wanted to. So I'm excited <laughs> to see Johnny's fresh take on it. I think it's gonna be really good. Yeah, talk about it. Yeah, it, uh, what, going to the Hayride as a fan, I was always uh, blown away that there's always, you always see something that you haven't experienced before. And Trick or Treat was always one of those things that was amazing to me. I'm like, how did nobody think of this before? It's so good. Uh, so when we decided we want to sit down, we, we put a, a lot of love into this one. It's a super fun attraction. We're building all brand new houses. They're all themed in our twist on it. Is this is the house where the uh, this is the neighborhood where the monsters live, but they're also celebrating Halloween. So these monsters are dressed up like other monsters, and <laughs> all their houses are themed to the core monster, but they're decorated like the monster that they're portraying. So it's a, it's a really really fun uh, attraction that really captures the essence of Halloween. And um, I don't know if we have any home monsters in here. Anybody that, that does their own home haunt yard display? Well, we're huge fans uh, of all the home haunts out there, so we wanted to pay a little homage where you can go and you're gonna enter one of our houses through the garage and go through their home haunt. It was a super, super fun experience. Yeah, it's definitely a tribute to, to our love of the, of the home haunters. Now, on the outskirts of the Midnight Falls Town Square, uh, there's like this kind of dingy farmhouse, but they are operating a business. And they're in the business of keeping the Midnight Falls highways and local interstate free from deceased vermin in the Roadkill Ranch. This is where shit gets crazy. <laughs> so when we went and visited the property, I've only been up there uh, during the hayride, but we went up and we're like, that's where that dark maze is? 
it's sketchy up there. So we really leaned into that, where you, you really feel like you're out in the woods, you're hearing stuff behind you, come out of the tree, like, what the shit? So we, we wanted to create this open air experience where you're, you're guided more through hay bales and corn stalks. We have a, a lot of walls and scenic work, but we wanted you to feel like you're truly out in the middle of nowhere. And then on top of that, we're unleashing, of course, a bunch of crazy uh, roadkill attendance with chainsaws to be chasing you through the whole thing. So this is definitely like the heavy metal rock show of, of the entire experience. Right, so, so far we've got the Midnight Falls Town Square celebrating the 13th annual Halloween Festival. We've got the dark and spooky house at the end of the street with the Midnight Mortuary. We've got the Midnight Falls neighbors out trick-or-treating and then we've got the weirdos over at the Roadkill Ranch. So now we're at the, the main event, the hayride itself. And of course, Midnight Falls is, is offering fun hayrides underneath the moonlight and, and cruise the local foothills and celebrate Halloween. But of course, it's out there in that darkness. It's the epicenter on what's causing the evil in Midnight Falls. And the hayride experience really kind of begins out in the queuing area. And you're getting a taste of it right now out on the show floor from Midsummer Scream. Yeah, so if, if anybody stopped by our booth, you'll, you've seen the gas station, as you can see here in the artwork as well. Uh, this is one of the actual set pieces that you will find out at the, uh, the attraction. And this is where you're going to board on to the hayride experience where we go out to the woods and what could go wrong, right? But also, uh, you know, we really wanted to, to really theme it out to really immerse you into the experience you're about to embark on. And we created different little vignettes to really set that up, including uh, the radio station. And each attraction, I don't know if you mentioned this, each attraction you will hear that radio station playing that always ties everything back to centralize it to Midnight Falls. Uh, the voice might sound familiar, Ted, right? Me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, you get to go and you get to see the, the radio broadcast uh, as he's giving his spiel, um, as well as some other fun vignettes uh, throughout the area to, to get you ready for your hair ride. Yeah, so the whole idea is, is what he was saying, is pretty much to kind of piggyback off that, is, is there's clues throughout the entire event that will be providing information on what the heck is going on within this town. And so you'll be able to check out the, you know, all of the radio broadcasts and be able to hear what's going on. And, and, and the idea is by the end of the night, after you've gone through all the attractions and spent the time, your evening there, you'll get an idea of what is wrong with Midnight Falls. And so here's some uh, other photos and, and some behind the scenes work of, of the gas station. And, uh, and take a, when, you, when you go out and visit the booth, uh, come by and say hi, of course, but also take a, take a deep look at, at the scenic work that my team's doing. It's incredible the, the amount of love and passion and detail that they're putting into these sets. Yeah, absolutely. Give them all a hand. Really, yeah. yeah. All right. So everything is being built off site right now because, well, it's Griffith Park. It's a regular park. People are hanging out and taking their kids, having picnics and stuff. So you can go to, uh, do some foam chainsaw carving out there, I'm sure, right? <laughs> Probably, yeah. But in, in this picture, we wanted to show you too some of the, some of the scale of the monsters that we're building. We're, we're big fans of, of monsters and the old 80s monster movies, hence why it's set in the 80s. So we're really going over the top of some of these, these large, large monsters that are going to come to life out in the woods. Yeah, and, and um, just to kind of really piggyback off of what Chris was saying before, I mean, it's really important to, to, to note that, I mean, even though we're up here making this presentation, we are standing on the shoulders of an incredible team of people that are helping bring this to life. I mean, we've got some of the best people in the business, from carpenters to technicians, prop people, audio people, makeup, wardrobe, on and on, some of the best producers in the business. So a huge shout out and thank you for all of your guys' hard work because it's really amazing. Um, that pretty much is getting close to what we've got prepared. If we've got any time, I can't really see how much time we've got left. Uh, does anybody have any questions? We can open things up for any questions. Over here. Uh, could we see the return of the New York Hayride and the uh, camp out? Can we? Yeah. No, no announcements today. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I mean, listen, 
uh, when Melissa and I first started talking, I mean, you know, she definitely has vision to, to grow the hayride and to bring it to other markets. And, and uh, I think uh, the camp out was like a, a pretty amazing thing that happened out here. So we've talked about it. Um, I, I guess that's about as far as I'd go right now. Uh, real quick, uh, as a note, when, uh, back in the day, when, uh, when they first launched the camp out, that's where we met. I worked as an actor for the Great Horror Camp Out. I was a chupacabra. <laughs> and I will say my favorite moment ever I've ever had scaring was going out at three in the morning and just dragging people out of their tents. <laughs> so. I think that's how I met Lorenzo, if you're in here. But anyways. I personally, Chris, would love to take a crack at the camp out. I think it's, it, and once again, it's an amazing, unique experience that Melissa and their team put together, and I think it'd be a lot of fun to, to bring back. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions over there? I hope I'm not dead by then. <laughs> I <guess. laughs> said, I hope this year doesn't kill me. I'm not dead by then. Um, yeah, five years, what do you think? I mean, in, in the next five years is a long time. Um, I think in the next five years, we can probably count on, you know, the Hayride just continuing to get a lot of um, investment in the brand um, here in LA and, you know, other markets as well. Um, I, I can honestly tell you that, you know, seeing every single year of the Hayride since its inception. This year, I'm, es I'm especially excited. You know, we, we thematically change the Hayride every year, but this year, it's uh, the level at which it's being reimagined and refreshed um, is, is bigger than we, you know, we've ever seen, bigger than you guys have ever seen. And I think you know, anything after 10 years kind of needs a new, fresh kind of set of eyes to go on it. And, um, and Johnny has done an insane you know, job of kind of taking this environment, keeping it very on brand, but bringing it to the next level. So, you know, five years, I, I can, you know, I can hope it's, it just keeps going that way, but I'm excited about this year. I think this year is gonna be our, our next level. I think for the company, um, you know, to, to Ted's point, I mean, some amazing people we've been working out with, working with out here. And, you know, our company has grown, it's going to continue to grow, and um, I'm happy to be able to kind of create like a really big sandbox for John and his team to play in. So, I think there could be a lot of, uh, a lot of cool things that happen over the next five years. Awesome. Anybody else? Any other questions over here? Uh, maybe not to back on a previous question. Um, 1031 Production then started doing some year-round events, and I know 13, uh, 13 Store is also doing a uh, year-round event. Any chance of us having year-round events in Southern California, such as the movie nights coming back also, or something else that's year-round? I mean, we were just talking backstage, saying that we would love the movie nights to come back. So, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I think that's definitely a possibility. I like to do anything that gets Halloween outside of Halloween, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think if we, can, if we can figure it out, you know, I think we'd like to do some cool stuff here as well. Awesome. Another question over here? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a, a ton of people here, and, and obviously, as evidenced by this show, a lot of fans, you know, so um, I think we'd be silly not to be looking at other opportunities and, and thinking about what else we could do out here. I mean, the Hayride's a monster, but um, it's also a, a monster to set up and tear down in a very short window of time, so it would be nice to, um, uh, be nice to have something else to experiment with out here. Um, you know, where we might be able to do year-round events and do different things. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Anybody else? There's one back there. So, will there be any references to previous years for the Haunted and Hayride and for John? Are you going to make any references to your past work at Knott's Berry Farm? There won't be any Knott's Berry Farm references here. I don't know how they'd feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, like I said, where we 
we have visited the Hayride multiple times. We're big fans of it. We think it's very innovative and very creative. So we have definitely um, kept around some of the things that we really loved and appreciated and tried to build on top of some of those things. Yeah, I think there's a, a little bit of hidden things in anybody, any any creative does. I know we hide things all the time. I mean, if you guys are listening once again to the radio broadcast down there, I think um, they properly made fun of me in that radio <laughs> broadcast. Yep. It was pretty good. <laughs> properly made fun of Ty. He's out there and Warren. And, and uh, so I think it's pretty cool to hide little things in there. I think you'll see a lot of that this year. Maybe not references to past work as much as just kind of hidden Easter eggs along the way. Yeah, I think it's completely riddled with uh, fun Easter eggs that we planted in there. Absolutely. A ton throughout the whole event, through the attractions and even the radio station and all that stuff, too. Um, any other questions? There's one right here. Are you guys going to have more in, like interactive things? I'm talking about one year I was on the Hayride and I think it was a Santa Claus that hit us with bubbles. <laughs> and it was just so much fun getting hit with the bubbles all over in the hay. Are you guys going to add more of that stuff? Santa Claus with bubbles. <laughs> Jack? <laughs> Doesn't sound that different. I mean, yeah, there, there's interactive uh, elements, and I think um, they're fun. I don't, I, you know, it's like I don't want to ruin, I, I don't appreciate going out to an event and completely being drenched in anything. So we're, I don't think we're going to stay away from that a little bit. But yeah, there are definitely some, some interactive elements. And if you want, just let us know when you come in. We'll get some bubbles out. <laughs> 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 well, that, that one was fun. Yeah, so you're the one guy who liked that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the one that you liked. Yeah. Um, There's a lot of ponchos you went through, right? We went through like 60,000 ponchos that year. Yeah. And it was a giant Santa who busted out of an advent calendar and annihilated you with a snow cannon. <laughs> they were not bubbles, but thanks. <laughs> was something wet, that was it, right? Yeah, I think, you know, those of you that have visited the, the, the booth downstairs um, and just been able to interact with some of the actors that are down there, I think kind of shows you a little bit of the vibe we're going for, right? Where the cat, the characters will definitely be a lot more interactive altogether. So. Yeah, totally. So that's what I was going to say. Yeah, is the, the, the bulk of the interactivity is really going to be revolving around the characters, especially those in the town square area. Uh, another question over there? Uh, I know a couple years you've gone, you had a stop in the middle of the to get out and you kind of, that's what about. Well, <laughs> I mean, whatever, right? It doesn't matter. Anyways, <laughs> yes and no. Um, you're not going to stop in the middle of it, but we are going to have the hayride conveniently break down, and the only exit to get out is through the vampire 80s party in the cemetery. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you want to talk about the logistics of getting people on off the hayride. Yeah, it's, you know, logistically that, you know, I mean, and, and it kind of goes, like some people love it, some people don't, um, but logistically, I think stopping in the middle of the hayride, getting people off and then getting them queued back up to get back on, um, it is not ideal, you know, it's not, and, and I'll, some people just want to stay, you know, seated. It's like the kind of the, the, the magic of the hayride is that you're, you're in the environment of the hayride. So um, it was fun for a couple years, but I think logistically it doesn't make like a ton of sense. I don't think, um, you know, that, that getting off just to get back on um, is, is kind of worth the, you know, the 10 minute hike that you take through the cornfield. So. I think this is this is going to be kind of a, a better way to do it. Yeah, that was something that we we really enjoyed as well as getting off. We thought it was fun, but same thing logistically is a little tough. So we that's one of the a good example of something that we wanted to, to keep and hold on to and just kind of relaunch that idea. Right there. Since some of us fans are getting a little older and not watching this, are we sitting flat on the hay or are we gonna have hay bales to sit on this year? Warren. Warren. <laughs> Good question. Uh, <laughs> one thing that we're doing this year, um, the trailers are being replaced. Uh, some of them are coming over from the New York Haunted Hayride via Nashville. Um, 
but we are looking to take a closer look at the number of people that fit on each trailer and have a better customer experience sitting there. Um, because there's not uh, the, the tall scenic work and the limited amount of time to load in, um, we do want to keep people as low as possible so they have a better experience. So they'll probably still be sitting low, but we're also looking at replacing the straw with grass hay and a few things to make it a better customer experience while you're sitting and riding as well. Anybody else? Okay, great. Um, I love that you mentioned the radio show, but what is another example of a small detail that you have included to have such immersion in the event? The characters, very much so. They'll be giving you clues as to what's going on, um, and then a lot of the set pieces throughout are, are going to be providing some additional information. Yeah, everything's, everything's tied to each other. Everything has, everything is done with intent. So the Midnight Mortuary is going to tie into uh, Trick or Treat and the Hayride, you know, that is going to tell the story of, 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 the of what's going on in the entire town. So everything is, is tied together to really create that version. Right there. Uh, now that it's your 10th year, what technology has made life easier since you've progressed through this progress? This is actually the 11th year. It'll be the 11th, 11th, year. 11th year. Last year was 10th, but let's talk about technology. <laughs> wow. Well, There's two. I'm talking about um, That's a really good question. I don't even know that I've, I, I've actually thought about that. Um, but, you know, I mean, I, I think. We've had we've had a lot of new. Um, I mean, this year we just started doing photo booth things that you know obviously people it's all about the photo op these days. So there's that. That's part of the Hayride this year, and I think that's that's been um, fun and useful from a social environment, from a marketing environment, and getting people you know to, to kind of talk talk the good word of the Hayride. So um, you know things like that are cool. But one of the things about the Hayride in the past ten years is that it's it's not very technologically. Um, robust and and by design, you know, because we are out in the woods. And um, I think, from my perspective, the um, the objective has always been to give people like the best cerebral experience that they can have. You know, so it, it's from the second they get there to the second they leave, they're always submerged in the experience. It's like you know, there's other places, and I love them, but you you come out of a maze and you have to walk by SpongeBob SquarePants and The Simpsons <laughs> to get to the next attraction, and it just in a cerebral way it takes you out of Halloween. So for me, it was you know the hayride. I think is where it is a continuous Halloween experience from the moment you get there to the moment you leave. Um, you know, from the from the orange glow coming out of the trees and you know the the do with the fog in the air. So I think that's kind of been the nucleus of the experience, not like an advanced technological, you know, gain year over year. Thank you. Yeah, I wanna I wanna add to that. The the you know, to Melissa's credit, the the atmosphere that's created out there. You know, when you talk about technology in a lot of our indoor attractions, we use a lot of technology to try to suspend disbelief and, and to make the the attraction better, but you know, I remember the first year I went to the Hayride, and I walked up, and you know, I came out here, so let's, let's see what this thing's all about. And I walked up, and I remember walking up and seeing the orange glow and in the, in the fog, which is, you know, as, as a lot of us know here, is pretty simple in a way to do, maybe not on a, on as large of a scale, and just going, wow, like the atmosphere here. I mean, going back to the beginning of the the conversation, I mean, we we all all of us felt like. Um, when you go to the hayride, you're being transported to another place, you know, and, and um, just, I don't know how you compete with Mother Nature, to Melissa's point, you know, no, no SpongeBob in the woods, so <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool. But just to our, in case our tech guy's in here, we are bringing some cool stuff. <laughs> uh, very cool tech. Yeah, very great, great tech. <laughs> it's the best tech we can do in 12 days of setup. <laughs> Awesome. Any other questions right here? Uh, I just wanted to say, like, all the attractions sound like fantastic. You know, I'm sure they're going to be great. But which attraction are each one of you excited to see on the life of your guests? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, you want to go first? Sure. He's going to take mine. <laughs> I hope so. Um, 
I'm excited about trick or treat. Um, it's I grew up working on a farm, so I love the equipment, I love the hayride, and I love the environment. But um, part of what makes me feel good is is feeling like a kid again, and the trick or treat experience. You know, going through it a couple of times. You know, it took me maybe going to the hayride the first time to really get to understand it. And last year, being out and, and being around trick or treat and seeing people laugh and they're happy, uh, just because it's a kind of a goofy idea and everybody take something away from it, trick-or-treating. Um, I'm excited about that, the way that John and, and his guys have reimagined it and, and seeing some of the facades. Um, it's, it's awesome. I'm excited for the hayride. Right? It's, a, it's, the, it's the only hayride. You know, so, so experience something unique like that and to see what John and his team are gonna do and as they re-envision that and, and make it different than it has been. Um, you know, I'm excited to see that the most. Definitely the hayride. It's always the thing that I'm the most excited to see, and it's, it's the Los Angeles haunted hayride. So, hayride. <laughs> I think I'm just, I'm just excited to be able to hang out in the town square and see all the characters running around. We have our, we're going to have a cool trailer stage, some entertainment out there. Just be able to really live in that environment, I think, is kind of what I'm looking forward to the most. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I mean, it's tough because each one of these are kind of like our kids, right? So who's who's best, right? But um, I, will, I will echo real quick on, on Trick or Treat. I do also the, for my first trip to the Hayride and I went through Trick or Treat and it was like, you come out and you go, oh my God, why, why didn't anybody think of this before? So I wanted to go back to that. I was pretty, pretty creative for that time. Simple but creative. Right, yeah, for me, I'm, I'm looking forward to Town Square and just the event as a whole, really. I think since I kind of look at the whole thing as just one big story that's being told. Um, any more questions? Right there? Um, in, terms of, in terms of crowd and capacity, do you hope that people will be able to make it through all four attractions in one night, or is there like, you have to visit multiple times? Yeah, I, I mean, listen, I think the nature of the business is these attractions have become more and more popular is that it, it does get difficult to do that. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Um, and we, you know, we have launched other ticket options to enable people to be able to do that. And I think that's pretty common out here. Um, it's common everywhere. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I think I always tell people, like, I don't know why everybody comes on Friday and Saturday. You know, it's like, you come, on, you come on a Thursday, you come on a Sunday, you know, and uh, I think you can definitely do it on, on those nights. Maybe even on a Monday or Tuesday. If you're yeah. <laughs> yeah, John was... What's that? That's our secret, don't tell No, I, listen, I've been in this business a long time and standing there talking to customers that are upset because everything's so busy, and I'm like, yeah, everybody... You know, everybody has jobs. Everybody has to come on the weekends. It doesn't matter, you know, what we do, but um, that is a secret that shouldn't be told. <laughs> but to that, just to that point, the attractions are being designed with input in mind, uh, like all the attractions we do, so we're trying to keep it very efficient. Right here? Um, you guys have had the theater macabre, and that's always a really fun interactive little side show. Is that going to be around still? Right no. <laughs> Sorry. Something new and different. Right. We do, yeah, we do have something very, very fun planned for the, the, the on-stage entertainment. Yes. Uh, anybody else? And we're going to try to try to arrange things, if, if possible, within the footprint so that you guys can enjoy some of that from the line as well. Exactly. Very much so. Um, way there in the back. <laughs> Tater. Tater's here. Is this about the fog juice thing again? Tater from Foggy's Fog? Um, yeah, so thank you for sitting through our timeshare presentation. Yes. <laughs> we, we, we were not above bribing you guys to be here, but on a, on a serious note, no, we were just really excited. We want, we want everybody here to see it. You know, we want everybody here to know that, you know, these guys are, are breaking their backs, getting this thing uh, ready for you guys to see. And, you know, to, you know, like Melissa said earlier, it's been the biggest uh, investment, you know, into the hit ride in a long time um, to kind of uh, revamp and re, you know, reignite some things. And in the case of Trick or Treat, bring back some fan favorites with new twists. And, and we were excited for y'all to see it. And, uh, 
you know, that being said, uh, everybody in the room is going to get a, a free general admission ticket to come out. You're, there, there, there is some technology involved, so I would recommend you get out your cell phones here pretty soon. Time for two more questions while you're getting out your cell phones. Yeah, we'll give you guys time to get your phones out, but who else was there? One light over there, okay. different designing for the hayride which is have these big so sets I, and all that I stuff. I think right we want to try and obviously the, the the goal is to scare so we're looking at scaring instead of one person at a time walk through a tight hallway you have to scare a hayride full of x amount of people all at once so just kind of re-looking at how to make those scares the most effective as possible but also we're approaching this like a ride to make it entertaining to make it uh, cohesive from start to finish um, so yeah it's been it's been Different, but the same at the same time, but just making sure that we're approaching it more like a standard ride with scares built in opposed to a, a walkthrough attraction. And it's been fun and different as well. I gotta very say. much. Yeah, very much so. Uh, one more question over there. What if you don't have your cell phone on you? <laughs> if you don't have your cell phone on you, there's a gentleman in the back of the room. He's got his hand up right now. His name is Ty. Ty Rowe? Yeah, and we, we did plan for that to potentially happen. So if you don't have a cell phone, um, you visit Ty in the back. And there was, there, there's a guy in, hidden in the light here yeah. that's been having his hand up. Closing ceremonies as we get to go home finally. <laughs> um, no. Not really. Spray people with bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we're okay.